Buenos dias. Uh, I'm Mike Butler. It's great to be back here with the folks at Talentland. Um, the only thing better would be is if uh, I was with you live in Guadalajara. Uh, I miss my colleagues down there. I miss the team. I miss the food as well. Uh, but uh, we're going to have to do or make do uh, with uh, virtual here for at least this year. And then I hope to rejoin you guys again next year. Um, the goal for today is to tell you a little bit about Baxter. Uh, what our mission is, and then how IT helps uh, uh, achieve that, and uh, how we went about uh, really a transformation journey with uh, simplification and a focus on people to make it happen. Uh, anyway, uh, let's get started. So my name is Mike. I'm a senior director in our digital product IT team. I've been at Baxter since 2001. Uh, worked in a number of different areas, commercial IT, uh, European IT, medical products, infrastructure operations, enterprise architecture. Uh, a little bit about myself, uh, love all sports, uh, baseball, football, soccer, basketball, you name it. And then my favorite hobby is learning about new technologies. So today's agenda is to give you a little bit of insight to Baxter, where we operate, what we do. Um, a little bit of background on our products. Uh, then we want to talk about uh, the key pillars that we've been using to drive IT transformation, in particular simplification and then uh, developing talent. Uh, finally, I'm going to share with you a little bit of a, a demo, a YouTube video uh, from our, our, our Baxter YouTube channel on how we're using technology to transform uh, how we save and sustain lives. Finally, uh, at the end, we'll have some time for uh, some Q&A and uh, looking forward to uh, sharing our journey here with you. So the first thing to know about Baxter is really our mission. Our mission is to save and sustain lives. And you ask uh, probably, hey, Mike, you're in IT. What do you have to do with that? Really technology now and uh, healthcare are at that intersection. Uh, it's really a privilege to work at Baxter. And I do want to share with you a little bit about uh, how IT is helping achieve that mission. So what do you need to know about Baxter? Uh, we've had this same mission for 85 plus years now. Uh, in fact, it, you know, while a lot has changed in technology uh, over my 19 years at Baxter, the one thing that hasn't changed is our mission, as well as our uh, really tradition of healthcare innovation, whether it's the first um, IV bag, the first flexible IV bag, uh, first dialysis machines, HD and PD. Uh, across the board, uh, we've really been known for our innovation. Uh, that innovation has been uh, not only on the therapy, but how we manufacture, how we improve quality, and now uh, with, with the growth of our digital products, how we leverage IT to uh, enhance or improve therapy. We are a globally known brand. Uh, we sell our products in over 100 countries around the, the globe, and we sell in uh, all regions, uh, which makes uh, working at Baxter uh, a pretty neat thing. Um, there isn't a culture or a language or a corner of the world that you don't work with while, while at Baxter. And then one thing's common about our products. Uh, they're not elective products. They're uh, really the necessities of healthcare. And as we've seen um, you know, with, with increasing demand, uh, it's really rewarding to be able to uh, make a difference in patients and partners' um, lives worldwide. What, what this means is we get the opportunity or the privilege to serve 60 million patients annually. Uh, again, in over 100 countries. Uh, I think we're up to 49,000 employees worldwide now. Uh, this slide uh, uh, talks really about the breadth and width of uh, our businesses. Uh, we are a company that uh, generates revenue from all three of our major regions around the globe, uh, Europe, Middle East, Africa, Asia Pacific, and the Americas. That 60 million patients uh, seems like a large number. The one I like most is uh, uh, we make IV bags, and those IV bags uh, are used throughout the year in almost every healthcare procedure. Um, every second uh, of the year, so one second that passes, uh, we deliver 57 IV bags. So just in the course of this 20-minute uh, this, uh, presentation, 
you can imagine the impact we've had on patients. So a little bit about our six business units. Our business units make the products in over 50 manufacturing locations in 20 countries around the world. Uh, we have renal care focused on end-stage renal disease, peritoneal dialysis, hemodialysis, and then even running renal clinics, advanced surgery, bone graft, surgical glues, anything to improve the outcomes or minimize complications in surgery. Uh, pharmaceuticals, generic injectables, inhaled anesthetics, a number of uh, ne necessary products uh, in any hospital. Our medication delivery, the IV solutions I mentioned earlier, the pumps and the systems surrounding it. Nutrition, uh, parenteral nutrition, uh, when a patient can't take in food, they can't get the calories, micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, lipids that they need uh, to really heal. And then finally, acute therapies. This has really been in the news lately since it's a critical uh, component of treating uh, COVID patients. And uh, that re renal replacement therapy uh, that happens when uh, uh, a patient's uh, uh, struggling. So enough about Baxter and let's get into the technology. Uh, 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 some, some of the uh, uh, focus of, I, I think most of us here at Talentland today is understanding uh, how can we use uh, technology in more productive ways. And uh, one of my favorite quotes to start with is always uh, from John Gall. Um, John Gall, uh, to paraphrase, essentially said, the only systems that work are simple systems. So over the course of the years at Baxter, you know, we added uh, technologies, we added complexity, and we use cloud as a really a moment or a, uh, a point in time where we could uh, reassess what we had and simplify our environments. So where did we start? With cloud. I often get, uh, what is your cloud strategy or do you have a cloud first strategy? I'd like to think about it and we talk about it as an as a service strategy. Meaning that uh, if there is a, uh, another offering that's out there that's better than we, we can provide or engineer ourselves internally, we wanted to take advantage of it. So again, uh, while you could, uh, you know, people ask, you know, do you use Azure? Do you use GCP? Do you use AWS? I think those are important tools, uh, but uh, not really the, the first uh, tool that we look at. Uh, we first say what's the service that's required by the business and what's the best way to deliver it. So three years ago, we started with primarily an on-premise landscape, six external uh, data centers, over 4,500 servers, 1,500 databases, and 100, or 1,400 applications. That complexity had grown over time, and we wanted to take a look at how we could improve it. Um, we knew that we had this one opportunity before we uh, retired those data centers to assess uh, and look at how we delivered services to our business. Then also wanted to understand, uh, were there ways for us to optimize or improve process? So that's why we focused on as a service versus calling it a cloud migration per se. Uh, there were multiple cloud migrations across the board here. The majority of those 1400 apps have changed or moved or um, been reshaped. Uh, but we used uh, this as an opportunity, and I, I, I stress this for everybody, just don't lift and shift your environment. Find a way to move and improve. So, so what do I mean by move and improve? We have uh, this decision framework uh, to, to really help us with that. And we always start first uh, moving from left to right. Um, meaning starting with BPAS or business process as a service. Uh, is the service or capability we're trying to deliver something that uh, can be more economically, more efficiently, or more successfully uh, delivered uh, by a partner with uh, uh, taking the entire um, function and, and providing it? Uh, if that isn't an opportunity, we look at SaaS offering second. Platform as a service third. We have a number of different platforms as a service. We think of AWS, uh, Salesforce.com, our robotic process automation tools, all as platforms uh, where we can um, craft or build uh, services 
uh, on the backs of the capabilities that uh, these companies have built. Uh, then finally, we look at infrastructure as a service. I'm going to talk about our process there. That is a really key tool, but is really our fourth choice when looking at uh, uh, leveraging cloud and simplifying our environment. Then finally, we do have still have some co-location. Uh, we are using that for two things. Any of the legacy equipment or requirements around uh, telecommunications, security that we couldn't use on the first four choices, we've placed in our colos. Uh, but this, this decision framework is where we start with each of our migrations. Where does that land us? It lands us with one primary public cloud infrastructure. That's AWS our private cloud or colos underneath, and then other public cloud services. And uh, so uh, while the bulk of what we are doing is with AWS, we've set up kind of the mechanisms to assess and determine if there's a better way to deliver um, uh, our, the capabilities that our business needs. Uh, before you move any system to infrastructure as a service to AWS, I think it's really important to follow the five R's or, or consider them. Uh, you know, if you're looking to save money and you move everything, uh, you, you won't. Uh, so the first uh, R that we look at is retiring systems. Is there a way for us to decommission or simplify what we have? If we had four regional systems, could we combine them or retire them and create one? Um, can we rehost? Uh, do we have to ha continue to have uh, dedicated database services? Could we leverage something like the relational database services that are offered within AWS. Can we replatform? Can we move to one of those higher level services, business process as a service, software as a service? Um, use uh, your moves to cloud as an opportunity to refactor. If there is uh, some expensive or frequently breaking code or single points of failure, uh, public cloud will fail just like uh, on-premise infrastructure. So we've used it as an opportunity to refactor our applications and then finally replace the old. So uh, you don't always have these opportunities. And so when you're moving to cloud, uh, focus on each of these five R's and see what you can do to simplify your environment. Clearly moving uh, 1500 applications to a number of different as or as a service uh, areas and refactoring, rehosting, replatforming, that is a ton of change. Uh, this change is not possible without people. In fact, uh, when we started working with AWS, there was this debate over, should we hire somebody to do this or should we do this ourselves? And uh, really the guidance there was, if, uh, if you could hire it, it's our, it would have already been hired by somebody else. So we wanted to make sure that everyone uh, within our IT team had the opportunity uh, to move along with us in this change. Uh, if you like things exactly the way they are and don't want change, IT is probably the wrong place to be. But we did make sure that we had uh, at least a ticket for everybody to get on the bus. Um, we wanted to be inclusive and then give that opportunity for our IT teams around the, the globe to embrace uh, this move to cloud. So if the first pillar was simplification, uh, the second and most important uh, pillar was talent planning. Uh, and how you, we built up the new skills to deliver these models. The first thing we did was put in place a training capability. We used uh, uh, training from Cloud Guru and Linux Academy and built up a real big focus on certifications. Uh, we knew we had to adopt new methods to deliver this and uh, DevOps, Agile, uh, Kanban for uh, managing work and process. And we knew we had to do this globally with our businesses uh, occurring everywhere around the globe. We needed to build and attract that hard to find talent for cloud, artificial intelligence, robotic process automation, machine learning. And we really did it from the ground up w around our people. So it was a lot of change. It took a lot of courage from the teams. It was uh, um, not easy. I really like this quote, it's hard at first, it's messy in the middle, and then gorgeous at the end, uh, like climbing a mountain. And uh, really proud of what we've done. And each of those 1500 applications is important, um, important to the business. And we wanted to make sure we were able to do it efficiently. And again, the two pillars we did 
that with were simplification and people. While all those applications are important, I wanted to share with you one of the ones uh, I'm proud of. Uh, it's called our share source application. It's used by our renal patients uh, around the globe uh, to keep in touch with their uh, uh, nephrologists, with their doctors, and uh, really build that connection. This con I'm going to play for you a quick video about one of our renal patients, uh, Jeremy. Jeremy's in Canada and dependent upon ShareSource and upon uh, uh, the Baxter Cloud to deliver services in his care. My name is Jeremy Patrick Starr. I am 45 years old this year. I've been blind for three years. I had questions after questions running through my mind, like how is he going to do this? He's blind. Um, how am I going to train him? My name is Karen Ellison. I work at Seven Oaks General Hospital in Winnipeg, Manitoba. I work in the peritoneal dialysis unit. When I first met Jeremy, it was in 2015. Um, he had to start on dialysis. And then with the PD, I'm here at home, where I'm comfortable, where I, where I feel safe, where, where I've mapped out every square foot and, and I know where everything is. The machine itself, the cycler, because it's not like the twin bag where I'm sitting around all day waiting for about two hours or so for the next treatment. I have my, my day to live. I would have to honestly say the machine itself, the first day, I felt comfortable with it. Intuitive, I think is a good word. It's quite easy now. It was very nerve-wracking the first time, of course. Remove drain line from line organizer and let hang. Uh, the voice is very, very handy. It truly is step-by-step -step instructions. You know, our, our world is designed for the sighted, the, the mobile. And, uh, you know, I've recently become aware of just how uh, disabled, unfriendly the world can be. So it's it's nice to see a company like, like this make a product that uh, I can breeze through it. And if I can breeze through it, anyone can. And ShareSource gave me the confidence to train him because I knew I could view every treatment from Winnipeg. I don't have to come out and do program changes out to his home. It's all available on the web. You just log in and look at the treatment data. We're finding that with the accurate data, we're able to, to troubleshoot easier, um, figure out problems quicker, because the share source is uh, monitoring and sharing the information that it does share with her, they can, they can keep track and they might actually notice something before I feel it. You know, so I think that's a great thing. It, it's almost, uh, almost as if I were in their care, in, in the clinic, and with them monitoring me. And, you know, and that's, a, that's a good comfort. Even something as serious as uh, kidney failure doesn't have to hold you back from having a full rich life. So fight, you know, fight on. I always love watching that video. Uh, it's great to see. And um, you know, just to wrap up, I, I do wanna get to Q&A uh, and answer any questions that the group has. Uh, but I did want to share with you our journey, remind you to use cloud as an opportunity to simplify, an opportunity to grow your team. Uh, talent and people uh, are absolutely necessary to make this journey. Finally, again, before we open it up for Q&A, I did want to give a quick plug to our center here in Guadalajara uh, that uh, you can join and become part of this journey, part of this great mission to save and sustain lives quick QR code there uh, for you to be able to uh, find jobs, find opportunities, find out more about Baxter.